So let's talk enormous exo armor, mighty siege drills, and devastating firepower with an overview of Centurions in Warhammer 40k and how strong they are right now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're back for another Space Marine unit review. In this video, we're going to be talking through the Centurion squad, a nice unit made up of everyone's favorite Space Marine inside a Space Marine. In the video we'll talk about the models briefly and then go through the rules first for the Devastator squad then the Assault squad, a few obvious synergies and combos with the unit in game and how I'd roughly think about using them in battle. The Centurion exosuits are kind of halfway to being basically Space Marine battle suits pretty much, bulky further exo armour that's designed to interface with a regular warrior's power armour, trading speed and flexibility for just massive amounts of toughness, resilience and raw strength. They fit in somewhere between infantry and heavy armour, near impervious to small arms and able to bear weapon systems that any one man would not be able to wield, or stride into close proximity with mighty siege drills to take down the enemy's fortifications and biggest and war machines around. The sculpts themselves are some of the later firstborn sculpts for the Space Marines. I feel like these were definitely models that got treated with a lot of derision when they first came out. The phrase Space Marine within a Space Marine was definitely bantered about quite a lot at that time. I feel like maybe community attitudes to them have mellowed a bit since then. They are a bit oddly proportioned and maybe don't seem quite as practical as maybe some units like the Gravis Armoured Aggressors maybe. Though it's kind of hard to say that they don't fit in with 40k's big stompy war machine type vibe. The grim darkness of the far future isn't always known for being too practical. The miniatures from Games Workshop cost £50, US dollars or €65. Euros. The miniatures are really quite big, but they're still just three infantry models. I do feel that it's just really quite spectacularly pricey for that. And I feel like Games Workshop gets away with charging as much as they do for them, both because they're a little bit bigger than normal. They tend to cost really quite a lot of points in game, which makes it feel a bit more reasonable. Plus, they do actually come with actually a surprising amount of options per miniature. If you do just glue the miniatures in any one way, then you're going to be left with loads and loads of spare guns and things. Three different main weapon options for the Devastator version, the different chest options, plus the siege drills and their options for flamers or melter guns. If you do want to magnetize out every single option for these, it is a bit of a job, as I can certainly attest to myself. For points per dollar, they're around about two, which isn't great, but maybe isn't the very worst in 40k. And as always with these, if you were looking to pick them up a little bit cheaper than elsewhere, you can find them from Element Games in the UK for £43, or Gap Games in Australia for 68 Australian dollars. Both of those are links down in the video description, as with a few other affiliate links, anything bought through there does help to support the channel. Getting into their in-game rules though, and the Centurions have the two different ways to field them, the Centurion Assault Squad and the Centurion Devastator Squad. The Devastators are a little bit more than the Assault Squad, 175 per 3 of them versus 150. With the points cost that high, they are certainly one of the biggest and most high investment units you can fill with Space Marines. For that amount of points cost in any one unit, there's not a lot that beats it besides things like Rank Top Terminators. It does mean that they can be quite efficient for things like Stratagems, though are a bit limited as they can't take leaders in the unit. For their basic stat line, they move 4 inches, so definitely very slow by all accounts. If they're starting on the board and someone hits them with the minus 2 movement debuffs that a few armies have, then they're not really going anywhere. It basically means that if they're backfield fire support, they're going to be at least fairly static. And if you're moving up the board with them, you probably need something to deliver them, like maybe a land raider for the assault variant. Otherwise, for their defensive profile, their toughness 7, a 2 plus armor save with 4 wounds and no invulnerable save. Toughness 7 does mean that they're going to be able to laugh off a whole bunch of small arms, but I still wouldn't say that they're particularly good durability for the points really. Anti-tank weapons will kill them about as easily as most vehicles, and compared with tanks and vehicles and things, they're going to be a lot more susceptible to mid-strength firepower. Things like plasma guns and melter guns will absolutely go through these very quickly, even with a high save and potential for cover. I feel like they're a unit that maybe needs a bit of careful play as a result. If there is a way to keep them safe from the enemy's best firepower for killing them, then they might live a lot longer. Starting out with the Devastator squad, these guys are the range variant of the unit and they're the ones that are 175 points for three. They get two primary weapons that they can take, the chest weapons that you can either take the Centurion Bolters or the Centurion Missile Launcher. The Bolters are basically half what you'd have on say a Land Raider Crusader Hurricane Bolter. Three twin link shots out to 24 inches or six twin link shots to 12 inches. Definitely not a bad amount of volume fire, though kind of need to be close to actually get that much value out of them. I must admit I do think that for the Devastator version I'd much rather go with the missiles. 
D3 shots at strength 9, AP2 and damage 3 with the blast keyword that is pretty good in general purpose, enough strength to at least worry vehicles a little bit and will be quite good against medium infantry and terminators. Then for their primary weapons you've got the choice of 3, twin heavy bolters, a single grav cannon or twin las cannons and for me I think the choice of those is really between the las cannons or the grav cannons, the twin heavy bolters just don't really have a profile that competes very well with them at this point I think. They're a bit better against things like standard space marines and horde type things, but only by a bit, and they're significantly worse against tougher stuff. The grav cannons are strength 6, AP 1, and a flat damage 3 with the big anti-vehicle 2+, so pretty much effective against most things besides 2-plus armor saves in cover, or against monsters. And the twin last cannons are the normal profile, but with twin links to re-roll the wound roll. In general for damage output, the last cannons work out a little bit better against 2-plus save vehicles, or 3-plus save vehicle in cover, Grav cannons will generally average just a tiny bit better against a 3 plus save vehicle out of cover, though there is quite a big difference in threat range as the grav cannons have to get within 24 inches and need to be a bit more aggressive and have more limited targeting options, whereas the las cannons can plug away from the backfield. Overall I'd probably be a little bit more tempted by the las cannons, but I feel like there's not really much in it and you could use them in different ways. In particular the detachments that get the option for a bit of extra AP could be really interesting with the grav cannons, say like Gladius or Vanguard. Then to amp up all that firepower, the Centurion Devastators get a flat damage boost. They always re-roll hit rolls of 1 against their target, and then if they're targeting an enemy unit or an objective, they get to re-roll literally all hit rolls instead. I'd basically just factor that into their normal damage output, as it's never going to go away. The difference between getting the hit re-rolls of 1 or shooting against a target or an objective is going to be the difference of an extra 14% worth of damage output compared with what you'd have normally. So it does mean that while they are a bit better against shooting squads off objectives, the difference isn't standout unless maybe you've got a minus one to hit modifier or something. The hit rolls do mean that you won't be getting as much value out of Oath of Moment as some other units though, as they're already re-rolling a portion of their hits, if not all of them. I thought it might be interesting to see how their anti-tank damage stacks up against a few lightly competition things in the backfield. This is looking what a Centurion Devastator squad with missiles and last cannons can do against a few other tank competitors. Overall I feel like out of a few different hard target categories their numbers do hold up pretty well. Per point they do seem to be the best overall against Terminator type targets and that's actually more carried due to their missile launchers as opposed to the last cannons. They're just really quite good profiles for taking down Terminators with that D3 damage and strength 9 AP2. Otherwise against the heavy targets their raw numbers do a little bit better than the Ballista's Dreadnought for the most part. They're maybe not quite as impressive overall as the Gladiator Lancer, which still seems to be the king of anti-tank from the backfield. These numbers for the Centurions though are perhaps being a little bit ungenerous to them, as it's assuming the target isn't on an objective. If you can take aim at something there, then they'd gain an extra 14%. That would have them fairly similar to the Gladiator Lancer overall. I think in general though you would hope that the Centurion Devastators had quite good numbers for raw firepower, as compared with the other options they do have a fair few disadvantages. They are basically less mobile than just about anything on that list, all the rest moves at least 8 inches where they move 4. They don't want to get tagged in melee as they can't make use of big guns never tire, they don't have any character support options and unlike vehicles can't make use of tech marines and things. And I would say that compared with most of these vehicles they're maybe not really all that tough for the cost, anti-tank firepower is pretty much similarly effective against them but they're far more susceptible to plasma and melter. Overall in general you might want some of them as a home field fire support unit, maybe deploy behind a ruin to keep them safe, then step them out to take up firepower to full effect in your first turn. Their lines of sight might be a bit more limited compared with a few of the other things that can move quicker, but at least they can be some home base fire support. Otherwise maybe to gain angles if it made sense you could either strategic reserve them or maybe even use something like a repulsor as a transport. You would sacrifice a turn of firepower but if the opponent was likely to hide everything anyway then you might still be okay just turning up on turn 2 to deal damage. Their counterparts, the Assault Centurions, 150 points for 3 of them, or 300 points for 6 of them, so at least a little bit cheaper than the Devastators. As well as their very nasty siege drills in melee, they come with some pretty reasonable ranged firepower as well, the Centurion Bolters or the Assault Launcher as their chest weapon, and then Twin Flamers or Twin Melter Guns as the backup gun on their drills. For the chest weapons I feel like I'd probably just take all the Centurion Bolters, I feel like that's just quite nice, reliable anti-horde type damage dealing. And in general I think that's going to be more useful than giving you the option to trade 1 CP for some mortal wounds with a grenade stratagem. 
The Centurion Bolters just alone with three of them do around about seven dead Termagants at 12 inches, which is quite nice, or around about maybe one or two Space Marines dead. Otherwise, I feel like there's not really too much to separate the Twin Flamers or Twin Melter Guns. Just depends whether you want a bit more Horde clearance or if you want to be able to punch up a little bit at range. Three Flamers would get you six more dead Termagants plus around about one more Space Marine and also give you the option for some fairly okay Overwatch as well. Whereas three Melter Guns are quite reliable with the wound rolls given that they get to be twin linked and get to re-roll. They kill around about one or two Space Marines there or around about seven wounds on average to a Toughness 9 Rhino tank which I think really isn't too bad considering the main event is their siege drill melee. In combat, as you'd expect, they are rather punchy. Three attacks each, which might not be too much for a 50-point model, but they hit on threes with strength 10, AP 2, and damage 3, and all of that with twin linked, so they are going to be really quite reliable, even wounding the toughest stuff around. It's already really quite an awesome profile for handling Space Marine Terminators. On average, you kill around about three of those with a unit of three Assault Centurions fighting with no further buffs, but if you do get them to fight monsters, vehicles, or fortifications, they pick up a pretty enormous sustained hits too when they're targeting those in combat. That's around about an extra 50% more efficient than you'd expect them to be on their normal profile just at base. That adds up to some pretty scary stuff. With no extra buffs, it's three or four dead Space Marines, around about three dead Terminators, on average 16 wounds to a Rhino tank, so that's most normal vehicles dealt with in a single round of melee, or about 8 wounds to a Lamb Raider. High toughness and a 2 plus armor save does cut into the numbers a bit. Still not bad for 150 points worth of models though in a single fight base. Overall, putting that together, it does mean that they do have some pretty standout damage output between their shooting and their melee. If you could deliver them in a position where they could both shoot and then go on to fight for the variant with the Centurion Bolters and then the Flamethrowers, on average, one unit should deal with around about 18 slain horde models in total between the drills and their regular shooting attacks, or around about 15 wounds in total to a toughness 10 3 plus save vehicle. The majority of normal sized units in the game between all that are going to be pretty much dealt with between the volume attacks and their high intensity melee. There's perhaps not too many things out there that are quite that general purpose, and you could make them a little bit more specialist at destroying heavies by sacrificing the flamers if you wanted to. Perhaps the biggest thing for them though is they really need delivery, again they're not really all that tough for the cost if you're firing plasma or melter at them, and I feel like compared with reserves that might be okay for the Devastator Centurions, you'd probably be wanting a transport for these guys to actually give them a reasonable chance to make it into combat. Although their firepower is good, I still don't think they're probably going to be all that worth it coming out of regular strategic reserve when your odds on going to fail that 9 inch charge, even if you CPV roll but. Overall, they definitely feel like a unit that's got the damage dealing in the right sort of place, even if they don't have loads of synergies, and you need to solve the problem of getting them there. Taking a quick spin through the support options in Codex Space Marines, Oath of Moment is maybe a bit more relevant for the Assault Centurions than the Devastators, given inbuilt hit rerolls, I suppose. I guess if you are in the position to deal critical damage to a high power enemy unit with the Assault ones, that's going to be absolutely brutal getting the hit rerolls, particularly with sustained hits too, perhaps. Otherwise, Armour of Contempt is going to be great on these, a 2 plus save, a relatively easy unit to get into cover if you need to, and no invulnerable save means that that could often have them saving on, at, say, a 4 plus against an AP minus 4 shot. A really big deal if you're saving a 50 point model with that. And Overwatch, I think, could be interesting for both units in its own way. Flamers plus the Centurion Bolters could be interesting for the Assault variant on lighter units trying to steal objectives. And if the Devastator squad can get the Overwatch with the 4 hit rerolls built in as well then you're going to be a lot more likely to land those sixes. Otherwise, for codex support, I guess you could use some of the Focal Marine Firepower Synergy units, in Cursors, the Combi Weapon Lieutenant, and the Storm Speeder Hail Strike all could be interesting enough, though I feel like perhaps the Storm Speeder Thunder Strike might be the single most interesting one for the Devastator Centurions with last cannons, as would be really helpful for their Centurion missiles to be wounding on fours, not fives most of the time. For support though, maybe one of the other big weaknesses of Centurions is the absence of leaders. No leaders wear Centurion armour whatsoever, and I feel like that definitely contributes to them being played a bit less than some of the other variants like Terminators or Aggressors, as it means that you can't do any clever tricks with things like enhancements or invest in a character to make the squad even better. They basically just do what they do and that's it. Any other stratagems from different detachments are going to be pretty handy on these guys though. They're really quite big value infantry units with a good choice of options, though maybe that's a bit more detachment specific depending on what you've got on offer. For transport options, I feel like the Land Raiders seem particularly good for the Assault Centurions as mentioned. You can move them 10 inches, disembark 3, 
shoot your guns and then go on to charge an average of 7 inches so that will give you an average 20 inch threat range which is pretty good for units that only usually move 4 inches on the board. You would have to take the squad in a fairly small squad number size though. Centurions count as 3 models for transport occupancy so it means that you could only have a squad of 3 of them inside a land raider as opposed to a full squad of 6 making the transport to unit occupant ratio maybe a little bit on the low side for the unit cost, at least maybe compared with transporting something like a big unit of aggressors plus an attached character around in a Lamb Raider Redeemer. Otherwise for transports, I guess you could use the standard repulsor for the Devastator Centurion variant. That could be quite nice for the grab version of those. Again, you'd only be able to get the three of them in the transport, though I think it's handy enough support for a shooting unit like them. It means they can potentially jump back into it if the enemy tries to charge them with something which is handy, and it would help them get lines of sight. I think they'd face some fairly stiff competition from things like Eradicators or Hellblasters for that transport though, perhaps. Otherwise, for things that they can get from detachments in Codex Space Marines, I think there's quite a bit on offer. The Firestorm Assault Force seems quite nice for the Assault Centurions, might face some competition from aggressors for the same role again. But getting the assault keyword is pretty handy for basically all the Centurions guns, even having the Devastated ones run around with a D6 inch bonus to their movement is going to be nice, but could be big for getting the Flamers and the Centurion Bolters within 12 inches. Strength 5 Volume Fire or Strength 10 multi guns is also very nice, and they've also got the Torrent Stratagem and the Plus 1 to Wound Stratagem, both of which are pretty nice for the Centurions, as one of the biggest and most threatening infantry units about. They could even make use of some of the transport shenanigans quite well as well, maybe if they were jumping out of a Lamb Raider. The Vanguard Spearhead feels like a rather nice one as well. That could be nice for the Devastator Centurions in particular. You could get cover and minus one to hit at range, which definitely would help out with their long-range durability issues. It would be at least a little bit harder to kill a unit of them hiding in the deployment zone. And on top of that, they do have some nice supporting stratagems as well. A plus one to hit, two hit on a two plus, and an extra AP minus one are pretty excellent, both for the grav and the last cannons, really. AP two grav does seem rather nice. And you can have units return to strategic reserve as well. And that could be quite a big play if you find them out of position, and they just need to move around the board to get line of sight on something else important. Finally, perhaps for the most interesting ones, I think that the Gladius Task Force is really quite nice. Again, easy access to advance and shoot is pretty amazing for these guys, and both the tactical and assault doctrines are pretty good as well. I do quite like their firepower damage buffs that they can get as well. You can get ignore cover and an extra pip of AP. Again, that would be very nice with the grav cannons. And the lance plus extra AP stratagem that you can get in the assault doctrine is really brutal for the assault ones. With AP minus 3 siege drills with a plus 1 to wound as well as those rerolls, you average around about 14 wounds on a lamb raider. And that really takes them to the next level compared with the 8 or so wounds that they'd normally do. Otherwise the iron storm certainly helps out with some single big rerolls when they're dealing with massive attacks like this. And the anvil siege force will be nice for a plus 1 to hit when they're static. Good for the Devastator Centurions maybe, as they're not really giving up all that much movement comparatively, so it's less of a trade-off for them than some other units maybe. Finally, for specific chapters, Uriel Ventures of the Ultramarines could deep strike them. I feel like he's actually a really good option with both of the units, delivering the Grav ones at close range, or potentially doing a pretty terrifying rapid ingress with the Assault variant. That's perhaps one of the single most reliable ways to get them to the front line, if there's a good place to drop them. For the divergent specific detachments, on the other hand, Death Watch can get access to sustained unlethal hits from them, and they'll potentially quite like the term of Ectoclades and the Teleportarium or the Beacon Angelus. Again, extra movement options are just really big with a unit that moves so slowly. Otherwise, for the Space Wolves, I like their Sagas, and the Logan rerolls can be quite good for the Assault Centurions. Getting rerolling all the hits is absolutely enormous. Black Templar can get a 6 plus feel no pain, and a stratagem for a bit more AP in melee is very big for the Assault Centurions as well. They've only got kind of middling AP at AP2. Dark Angels could return fire, which could be nice on a big unit in particular. And Blood Angels can take the Assault Centurions to the next level, hitting very hard with 4 attacks at strength 11. And he could teleport either variety around the board with the Librarian Dreadnought if it made sense. Though again, you're probably competing against other options like Hellblasters or Eradicators or Gladius Aggressors. Overall, between all that, I think they remain an interesting option, though maybe one that's going to be rarely at people's very top of their priority list to get in an army list. And I must admit, in competitive lists, I think they're pretty infrequent picks. 
The Devastator Centurions do have a lot of raw firepower, as seen by the numbers earlier, but they just seem to be kind of rarely taken against the Vehicle and Dreadnought firepower choices that you can have instead. Broadly speaking, I'd rate the Vehicle and Dreadnought firepower choices as having kind of similar damage output, maybe a little bit behind but not significantly. But for the most part, the Vehicle and Dreadnought choices will tend to be a little bit on the tougher side, at least needing some high-strength anti-tank weapons to take them down rather than Plasma or Melter. I certainly way faster than the Centurions are, which can be really big for gaining lines of sight on terrain-dense tables and armies that want to hide and do shenanigans. I'd definitely say that they're not unusable, though. It could probably help to make them work with either a transport or strategic reserve, or just certain detachments giving them some big incentives, like the Vanguard detachment with the extra AP stratagem. For the Assault Centurions, I feel like I've seen them played a little bit more often than the Devastator Centurions, though it still seems to be rather niche overall. I feel like perhaps are just a little bit of an underrated unit. Their damage output for the points cost investment really is kind of staggering with just how many targets they can deal with, with just one round of shooting and one fight phase if you can get them there. Though I still think maybe in people's minds, they're just not competing all that great with things like Aggressors or even Terminators, as they're maybe the rivals for big beat-down Armored Space Marine might, and they can take all sorts of character supports, which can make the overall unit feel really quite efficient. In Gladius, for example, people really like the Aggressor combo with the Fire Discipline and the Gravis Apothecary. Though perhaps arguably, if you can get the Centurions there, the on-buff numbers might not actually be all that far behind, particularly if you throw something like Storm of Fire at them. They're probably not a unit that I'd go too overboard in an army with, given that you kind of need to invest in their delivery, and they're not really the units that want to be taking the brunt of the enemy firepower if possible, but they seem alright for landing one devastating punch. For army lists that I'd seen using them recently, there was this one from the SoCal Open, where Mr. Ruben Zhao used this to come third, and going 6-0 at an 190-player tournament with the Gladius Task Force, and using a unit of Assault Centurions to do so definitely shows that they can be competitive at the highest level if you want them to be. It looks like in this one, the three Assault Centurions used take the Bolters and the Flamers, and they're riding to war in a Lamb Raider. Maybe quite a nice choice there as that one gives you some extra firepower and a slightly smaller transport capacity doesn't matter all that much as you're not using all of it anyway. In any case though, let me know what you make of the chunky armoured space marine boys here at the moment. Have you been using any Centurions in 10th edition? And if so, which flavour and how have they been doing? Look forward to hearing all your thoughts down in the comments. If you'd like to see more like this, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description, and that's down below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.